All right, back on the Impala today. Let's see if we can get these, uh, get some working windows on this side. No, you're not bringing home another piece of junk. <laughs> So today we're going to start working on this back window and see if we can get uh, figure out how long the window's got to be and uh, get it to roll up and roll down, get the regulator to work. Um, so I took the door panels off that side and like I said before, I, I left all the mechanisms in place and I wanted to do that just for reference so I can see how that all goes together. There's a lot of a lot of pieces to these. Uh, these door mechanisms and especially on these hard tops they're they're a lot different than than post style doors uh, the window regulators are so we'll be able to look at that uh, mechanism and reference it while we're working on this uh, one thing i wanted to mention was when you're doing something like this don't throw anything away so i got my door scraps over here i got you know the pieces i've cut out patterns i made for stuff you know, lock mechanisms, um, you know, little honks I cut out of, out of the other doors down there, but keep all this stuff until you get everything completely done. Cause you just, you never know when you're going to need a little piece of, of trim or a little piece of curve or, or something to piece this together. So, so hang on to all that stuff. So this is the back window. And, uh, so the way these, the way the back window is in this car, um, you don't have a track at this end and a track at that end like you do on a um, on a post uh, car. A hard top is different. So you got you got this piece here, and here's a roller here, and then you got this piece here. And there's a roller on the other side here, and if you look down in the door, I don't know if you can see it or not. All right, there's a track on this side that that roller goes into and there's a track on this side right there that this roller goes into so I'm gonna make an assumption since I cut since I added eight inches to the front door cut eight inches out of the back door I think it makes sense that this is probably gonna be eight inches shorter <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do uh, what I'm going to do first is get the glass out of this. So I'm going to take this trim off of here, take the centerpiece off of here. Um, if I'm thinking right, I should be able to cut this top piece of trim back eight inches and then save that piece to go on the front glass. Uh, that's the plan anyway. We'll see how well that works. But this piece here is a cast piece. So this is like, you know, this is like pop metal. You can't really weld this. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to take eight inches out of this and uh, and put it back together and stabilize it. And then, uh, so this is tempered glass. You know, I've been reading some uh, articles about can you cut tempered glass? Some of them say yes, some of them say no. So I don't know, I guess, uh, I guess we'll do some more research and we'll find out. The front glass will have to have a piece made. So <clears throat> the plan for now is is get this all apart, uh, shorten this eight inches, take eight inches out of here, and I'm gonna trace this glass on a piece of uh, plywood that's about the same thickness, and take eight inches, shorten it eight inches, and then cut out a pattern, put it back together with the, with the plywood for the template, and then uh, see if we can get it in the door and then figure out how we shorten the regulator mechanism and make that work from there okay so first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull this thing apart all right so i'm going to try and knock this apart with black wood hopefully my glass doesn't explode I'm 
the car. Like there's something down in there holding this thing together. Might be a screw hiding behind there. and somebody makes that rubber. We're going to need to replace that. Somebody asked me where I got my stool. That was kind of an oddball question. But, uh, Yard sale many, many years ago. will not move. Better off doing these things up.
have to drill them out and then uh, tap the blade. Rather do that and break your eyes. So, it's got a little screw thing on the end there. You have to want to shorten this thing and just probably going to have to put some little welds in there. I'm probably going to have to drill those guys out and move that down to here. So that this will all bolt back together. <coughs> But we'll see when we get to that part. So this is a solid piece. And so is this. We're getting this glass out of here unscathed is going to be pretty interesting. Actually, sit in that channel very far. this. But one of the things I read about uh, tempered glass is that you can use some kind of grinder and cut this without it exploding. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, if anybody knows, post it in the comments. Let me know. How do you cut tempered glass? Or can you cut tempered glass? So we'll worry about that part when we get to it. I'm going to cut a piece of plywood and we're going to trace this and then we are going to cut it out and then we're going to take eight inches out of it. I don't know, this is uh, a, so this isn't 190, you can see this angle is. So I imagine it should still work if I take if I go eight inches here to here and I go eight inches here to here, that should still I'm gonna take and see if that looks like. Uh, so 
or be making it there, there. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. So if I make these plywood that thick, it's like that's about a quarter, maybe six inches, maybe. Order pretty, pretty thick glass. I think I got something right here somewhere. I'll pause this for a minute while I do that. Okay, so here's where we are. I, um, I did what I said. I traced out the uh, piece of glass on the plywood, cut my plywood eight inches shorter. Um, then I cut eight inches out of down here. And uh, like I said, this is pot metal, so I'm gonna have to, you can't really weld that. I'm gonna have to figure out how to put that back together. Uh, I'm thinking maybe just a little plate across the bottom with some really good epoxy. Once I get everything fitting like I want it to, and I know the glass is right. So uh, then I cut this, uh, I cut eight inches off of this guy. And there was a, uh, there was that little tab in the end that the screw went through here to bolt this to the frame. So I went ahead and uh, I drilled that out and I welded it into this one. Um, and I, I still need to re-tap these. I just ran a self-tap screw in there just to kind of hold it in place. So uh, I measured this and I measured the other window. This window is eight inches shorter than the other back window. So it should fit. I measured the rollers. I got 13 and a half inches between the rollers. That's what I got in the car. Um, so let me show you a couple things over here. If we go over to the other side. Well, I already took it out, but there's a top rail. See where all this goo is? There's a rail that bolts in all the way down to there. And this glass goes up into that rail when it seats, when you roll that window all the way up. So right now, if you, let's roll this window up. You roll this up. You got that much of a gap that's that's what how much that rail takes up and then there's a cushion inside this rail this this slips into so one of the things i started thinking on this side was i can't open the door to put the glass in over here anymore so i hope that that gap on that rail or that gap there without the rail is enough to get the glass in or i don't even not i might have to cut away some of the inner structure of this thing and to like make a bolt-in piece just to get the darn window in. I hope not, but uh, we're gonna find out. Stand up with Okay, so I'm gonna set this here and we're gonna see if we can get that glass in there. Fingers crossed, I know mine are. This piece kind of swivels. Guys, good. Let's see if we were rolling all the way up. We don't have a regulator right now. There's stops in here you can adjust. 
or how far the window goes up. I don't have those on here. But I think that's going to work. And if you look right here, the edge of this, uh, this seal where this window shuts is right on the edge of this door. So that should work really good. So now I got to figure out how to make how to make the door regulator work, make it eight inches shorter and make it so it will roll the window up and down. But uh, this is a good first step. We're good here. So put this, this slide down. Okay, so I'm gonna get all the pieces for the window regulator together and uh, kind of look at how that one works. Now, if you look over here, it's a pretty good size hole in the bottom of that door where you can reach up and do that stuff. Well, that's not on this door anymore because I cut it out. So I'm probably gonna have to cut me a, cut a piece out of the bottom of this door, which shouldn't be a big deal. I should, theoretically, I should have more room in this door now that I don't have a, uh, the door operator in there to open and close the door so okay well i'll get all those pieces together uh i'll get a hole cut in the bottom of this thing and then we'll uh we'll see where we are okay so unfortunately this back glass isn't going to work like i hoped it would um so i need 14 inches of travel to get this glass all the way up and down and the problem is this is a window regulator for the back <clears throat> and it's kind of one of these scissor regulators where you got a you got a couple different tracks this rides on in here there's a track here and another track over here and then a track on the bottom of the glass so like this goes roller goes on one this roller goes on one and this one actually moves the glass up and down so it's reversed for this side but by shortening the door so much, I lost all that room in there and now there is not enough room for this in there. And so I could shorten it, but then if I shorten it, then I lose my travel and I don't even get the window up a fourth of the way. So that's not gonna work. So I'm looking online and I, they make some cable operated manual regulators. I really don't wanna do uh, power windows. I've just, I put power windows in older cars before and I've just, just don't care for them that much. I would rather have uh, just regular have the, the crank windows, especially with the kind of theme I'm doing with this. I'm not really doing anything modern on it. So if you take a look over here, <clears throat> so I cut an access hole in the bottom of that door so I could reach in there. But there's just no way to bolt that stuff in there. So I, I got the hammer holding the window up right now, but if you close this door, And you measure these gaps and you go around here. And you measure these gaps. This window is, is right where it needs to be and the size is right. So I'm just gonna have to come up with something else to crank it up and down. Like I said, uh, maybe a, a cable operator or I might just go to the junkyard and see if I can find some kind of little two-door sedan with crank back windows and and make them work you know so uh all kinds of options we'll but we'll figure that out the important thing for now is the window is in the right place it's the right size and it's going to lay into the track right so the next thing we got to do is this this front door and i think this is going to be easier uh, because i'm not going to be shortening the regulator or changing the size of the regulator it's just <clears throat> if you look over there at that door Everything will pretty much bolt the same. I got to get, drill a couple hole, uh, new holes for the one end of the track, but I'll just have an eight inch shorter glass on uh, on the glass, and to and so it'll I'll have to like support the back eight inch 
I'll have to support the back eight inches of that glass somehow. Um, so like this is your, this is the front glass. And this raw edge rides in the wing window channel. And then this is your bottom track, which I'm gonna have to extend somehow. Which I'll probably just just go to the hardware store and get a longer piece of channel that size and and make a longer track. Um, or I got these junk doors, I may be able to put something together out of some of those, but I think this will be easier. And I'm gonna leave this in the same place and this in the same place so that they go into the factory track locations. And so I'll just have another eight inches on the back here that I'm gonna have to have to support. Um, and we're gonna make that work. It, it, like I said, on these hardtop doors, you don't really have a track. It just rides in these roller, you don't, or you don't have like a back channel, like on a regular door. You just got these side channels that the uh, that the rollers ride in up and down. So I don't have to worry about uh, altering the, uh, making a channel for the back of that. So that's what we're gonna have to do. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna strip this frame down, get this glass out of here and cut a piece of, uh, a little piece of plywood eight inches longer than this. It seems to be the magic number. I got that back one eight inches shorter and it fell right into place. So I cut this one eight inches longer, get the frame around it, and uh, we'll do some test fitting and uh, and see what we got. Hopefully this one works a little better than the back one, but I, th I think it's going to looking at it. All right, so that is gonna be all for this video. And uh, make sure you hit like, you hit subscribe, uh, tell your friends about it. Uh, leave some comments at the bottom. I know a few people left, com left comments, not a whole lot, but, uh, you know, like to hear what you got to say about the project. And um, we will see you on the next one.